Google says that you are worth $300,000. That is, those are the stats on Google. That is about 4.3 million rand. That's what you wow. worth. Wow. Guys, when I say we have comedy royalty with us on the show today, I actually mean it. One of the funniest, nicest, most interesting, most stylish, straight out of Kempton Park, it is Skulk Poseidon Hoat. Hello. It is Kempton Park, right? Yeah. The New York of the East Rand. It's the New York of the East Rand. What can we say? We buy the airport. This is very true. Now, does that mean that you guys think that you're better than, say, Springs, for example? How would you compare the two? Well, firstly, Springs is not part of the East Rand. Oh, is it not? Springs is just Springs. Okay. That's how scared everyone is of Springs. <laughs> we actually just isolated them and said, you just Springs. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, the, I, I see the East Rand as Kempton Park, Boxburg, Brakpan, Benoni. So, yeah, I just think, yeah, Kempton Park is an industrial area. It's got a... It's got, got everything. It's, it's got the airport, you know, we've got an ice rink. Really? Yeah, that festival mall, there's an ice rink. We've got golf courses, you know, and the, the rest are just sort of, they come to Kempton Park to be entertained, you know. We've got, there's a big debate, we've got Empress Palace. It's halfway between Kempton Park and Boxburg. Boxburg will say Empress Palace is in Boxburg, but if you Google Empress Palace, if you look on the postal address, it's Kempton well, Park. Then, because you know that song that Jay-Z and Alicia Keys did, Empire State of Mind? Mm. That was about New York. Yeah. You could call yours Emperor's State of Mind. It works, it's right there. Empire State of Mind. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to take it all the way back to... Um, one of your biggest inspirations is Jim Carrey, more specifically Ace Ventura. Yeah. Right? Iconic. Cult. <laughs> Legend. I'm right? already laughing. <laughs> because, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Tell me, tell me what you're laughing at. No, because, so I used to do like these Jim Carrey impersonations at home. Just, exactly you know, you, what I was going to ask you to do. You, 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 <laughs> you, you do it at home because it's your favorite movie and you're a kid. So you're like, you're acting the fool all the time. And, you know, my parents used to watch those movies with me. It's like family movies. But then, like, a Tani would come visit. Now the Tani's sitting there, now my mom's like, you have to do, because my mom just yes. thought, I, I, I'm the only child, of course. Yes, so my yes. mom thought I was God's gift to yeah. children, actors, performers, whatever. And I would always do the scene where Jim Carrey gets out of the poop ball of the, the rhino, the rhino yes. right? I would always do that yes. scene at home, just to, just to make my parents laugh. But now this Tani, she has not even seen a Jim Carrey movie. She, the, the word Ace Ventura means nothing to her. She doesn't, and you need to know the reference to be able of to course, appreciate an course. impersonation, you know? So now mom's like, do it, do it. Like, you know, you, you're like a kid, you're like, nah, I don't want, nah, no. And then she's like, come on, do it. She, she'll love it, she'll love it. <laughs> the Tani's there like, kind of like, okay, well, I'm waiting in anticipation for this brilliant impersonation. Then you're there in the lounge and you know, you have to commit to that to that scene. So you're like, they're like, Eww! and you just sit there. My poor mother's like <laughs> slapping her knee. And the stun is like, oh no. You know, she doesn't know what to say. Like, she's like, yo, Greta, no, your child's very talented. Meanwhile, she's going home saying to her husband, shame the beside notes. Hey? The child actually. He needs to go think to, he to fell Sunday on his school. Head a little, <laughs> I think he fell on his head a bit, but they don't. But you know what? I was polite and I just nodded and said, it's a very nice piece of acting. Go away, Brandon. Go away. Brandon, I was this close. I was this close to combining my shakshuka and my shakira. Now I have to do the whole fucking thing over again. Speaking of acting, though, you went on to study drama. Yeah. Um, was it always, was it your intention to become a serious, like, dramatic actor? Or was comedy the thing for you? No, I actually, I think I was very naive when I was young. I always thought, like, oh, I don't want to do comedy because I thought, like, that they don't win the Oscars. That's a very good point. You know, like, the, the comedic actors yes. don't win the Oscars. You know, I was always, like, in the, in the back of the ice cream with like looking at the famous actors and it was always the serious, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, it was always like your Denzel Washington and 
like those kind of guys, you know. The thespians. Um, yeah, the thespians, man. Leonardo DiCaprio. So I always thought, like, I don't want to move too far into the comedy space because then I'm not going to be taken seriously as an mm. actor. And that was, like, my ultimate thing. I want to be taken seriously as an actor. And, and even to this day, now I actually don't understand why more comedic actors have not won Oscars, even for their dramatic roles. I mean, j speaking of Jim Carrey, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's this one movie, and not a lot of people know it, I Love You, Philip Morris, which he does with Ian McGregor. It's like a sort of indie movie, you know, no, it's not like a blockbuster. Some of the best dramatic acting I've seen in my life. And it's Jim Carrey, but he's not doing acting. And a lot of them on. actually do that. Uh, Jim Carrey, Steve Carell. Ricky Gervais. All of them. Once they transition, yeah. there's something about, they're just able to pull from more emotion and become so, so relatable. You know, and they, what they, it is. There's, there's glimpses like, I mean, that, that fatherhood movie of Kevin Hart now on. Oh, yeah. There's moments where you're like, Damn, like Kevin Hart can. Bro, that one hit me, eh? Act. I'm not gonna lie. That one, like the first first 10 minutes, I was like, oof, I was not expecting these kinds of feels. Yeah. Yo. I don't know how you're gonna do this. Mm -mm -mm. If you could have only one parent, I wish you could have had your mom. Because she would have been better at it. So that it was never really my 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 focus comedy. But then, you know, when I didn't get into that degree the first time I auditioned. Yeah, see, doing a general BA, you've got a lot of time on your hands, and my time management is good. If I if I had like an assignment to do, I would do it quickly because I was always scared of missing a job. Ah. Like I, I never wanted to be that that student that like um, every all the guys in the res are going out, and I'm like, ah, oh, I left my assignment to the last minute. I have to do this tonight. So I always like finished it quickly, and then I was just um, watching Suits in my room because then I was like, I'm done with my work, you know. You know, um, at the universities, they have those like illegal sites where it's like a sharing site oh, where yeah, you can yeah, yeah. download like five seasons of yes, suits in, yeah. in one minute. Eventually, I was just like, man, I need to get on a stage. I don't care in what way. I'll freaking strip. I just want to like perform because this is very frustrating. Just sitting in theoretical classes, you're learning about acting, you're talking about acting, but you're not doing anything. And then I, I found stand-up. When I started stand-up, I was like, okay, cool, there's something here. I, at first it was a hobby. Then I thought, okay, I'm gonna be an actor that does stand-up sometimes, mm. you know? If I need to pay the bills, I can do a gig here and there. Now it's very much other way around. Now, if I had to describe myself, I would say I'm first and foremost a comedian. And, they, and then I also act. I actually, actually met a uh, Skull Burger once when I, was, when I was younger and I was wearing a, a, my rugby jersey and I was really excited and I wanted to get his autograph. And I said to him, Skull, please can you sign my jersey? And he said, okay, what's your name? And I said, it's, it's also Skull. And he said, and how do you spell that? <laughs> like last year, I think was your year. Like you just, I think people, people knew who you were, but last year they were like, okay. How many people in okay. COVID can say that? COVID Self was my year. Feeling good, feeling positive. You went from comedy to acting. Uh, you've hosted a lot of TV shows. What would you say was your biggest breakthrough? Like when, when did you go, oh, okay. This, this is a thing now. I think opening for, for Trevor Noah at the Teatro in 2015 was was a big one for me. Yeah. Just because, I mean, you know yourself, to for, for 50,000 people to see you in a month, that's mm. a lot of club gigs. Mm. Well, that would take years mm. with club gigs. Now suddenly it's like 2,000 people a night, six nights a week. Touring the country. That, no, I only did the Teatro run oh, and a few wow. nights in Cape Town. And then soon after that, I started doing one-man shows. And then it's like people coming to my one-man show because they're like, oh, we saw you open for Trevor and we enjoyed your set. And as a South African, uh, you think you're doing well. You think you're doing well. You look at your bank statements at the end of the year and you're like, Plexab, I'm doing well. But you forget, you are doing well in rands. There's a Musa difference. Then another one in the acting world, definitely uh, Canari, which is an Afrikaans movie I did. Um, not comedy at all. You know, one of us is not, but as he the minister by the Canaries can and come, then it's not a part three or three. It's the other one that he tells. I just, I'm just really proud of that movie. It's like a true story. Um, the guy 
whose life it is about, also wrote the movie, he also did the music. You know, and I really just wanted to do his story justice. Yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of that movie and I, I think it was like also, um, I wouldn't use the word groundbreaking, but like a, a first in Afrikaans film. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay, so on the light show, we do a Google search uh, just to, you know, we'll type your name into Google right. and see what, what comes up actually. Uh, these are one of the first p uh, questions that people want to know about is your net worth. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> My net worth, your yes. Net please worth. tell me what it is. So, Google says that you are worth $300,000. That is... Those are the stats on Google. That is about 4.3 million rand. That's what you were. Wow. Yeah. Is that sort of accurate or? I mean, I, I don't know if they are valuing my jerseys at like, as like antiques. Maybe. Um, yeah, that's the only way I can made think. from like a wool from a sheep that can only be found in like Yeah, Guatemala. like that sheep has gone extinct or, or yes, 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 the yes, one yes, jersey yes. that I found in a random hospice in Rosebank in Cape Town was actually like Johnny Clegg's jersey and it's now worth Is this a, is this like a fact? No, I'm saying oh, if, if, okay. if, I was about if, to say. if that's how they were maybe working, <laughs> that's, the only, that's the only way I can get to. $300,000, but this is what people want to know about you. Hey, that's not bad. I, I mean, I don't care. I, I don't mind that it's out there. I yeah. mean, it, it looks good. Yeah, it, it see, does look. It does look very good. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's because you stayed at the Palazzo for what, like a month? Yeah. Uh, no, I wasn't in the Palazzo, but I was at Monty. But you were yeah. at Monty, but yeah. like in a nice fancy hotel. Yes, yeah. And staying there every single day. So I think people try to calculate it, going, "Hold on." I think the Google spas are like. Hey, uh, this guy's like staying in a hotel and he li lives in Joburg. Saz just... is probably going to watch this episode and go, hold on, <laughs> what do you mean you stay there every day in a hotel? <laughs> now, <laughs> you're a comic, an actor, a TV host, a TV producer. Uh, oh man, I, I could keep going on. Uh, now you're also an author. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. rur mein nie. Yeah, that's, that, uh... it's a, that's a strong word. That was just a passion project that I did with um, my friend. He's a writer, he's a journalist, he's an author. Yeah. And he said to the people who published his books, hey, we should do a book with, I, I should do a book with Skulk because we go on tour together. There's always these crazy stories yeah. that happens, interesting stories. We should put it in a book. That. I'd like to see this book. Yeah. I'd like to see it. It's like a light, light reading book. I think you can probably finish it on a flight from Joburg to Cape Town. It's like short, big words, big letters, of lots course. of pictures. Lots of pictures, yes. <laughs> some samples from the next jersey. Comes with some Just... pencils, <laughs> yeah. which can kind of in places. Oh man, Skulk, I could sit and talk to you all day and I really, really, I'm always looking forward to, to what you're going to be doing next. And every time something huge happens for you, I'm just like, of course. You know, you're one person that is consistently putting in the work. You're one person that just, you're always going left field. You're never following what everybody else is doing. You're always creating your own lane. There honestly is only one Skulk the Seder note. Thank and you. I really do appreciate, you're so, no, you're actually, so busy. actually, actually, actually. There's another one because I couldn't get skulkbasayan at gmail.com. Really? It said it was already taken. <laughs> so now I'm skulkbaside note. And then a number. With a, yeah, a random number <laughs> at gmail.com. Um, we've got a great relationship. Sometimes he forwards me emails. Really? Yeah. It's, it's like, <laughs> what would you quote to come perform? Or when is your show in Bloemfontein? Then he forwards it to me. I think this one's for you, Skulk. Then I'm like, thanks, Skulk. That's incredible. I think now it's at a point where you should just give me Skulk. Yeah, you might as well just do it. Com. The problem is he's probably going to Google your net worth and go, oh, a million rounds, please. He can please, buy please. it. You can <laughs> afford to buy it. Ladies and gentlemen, Skulk Poseidon Hote, uh, please do buy his book if you see it. If he does release a jersey line, please purchase, purchase that as well. Let's make sure that we get Skulk to uh, $500,000 worth. Before the end of the Google year. Google search, before the end of the year. For now, however, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be all right. Keep it light. We gonna be all right. Keep it light. Can't get enough of the light show? Why not binge all other episodes? Just click here. Where's it here? Somewhere. Just click. <laughs>